Right. Well, considering that my uh, microphone is doing some weird things, in other words, it's mainly filtering out the first little bit of everything that I seem to say, uh, I decided to try it with an external microphone. That still didn't fix it any. There was a glitch in the software uh, that did fix it for a short time, but that kind of went away when I restarted my phone to get it to work in other ways, which was allowed me to actually record the video. But I'm still using the external mic because it gives a cleaner sound and it doesn't give any background noise since my parents are watching TV and doing stuff on the computer in the other room. So, let me tell you what I'm going to be doing. Um, since this is only my second uh, attempt at a video blog, and I came up with this just off the top of my head since a lot of people are saying, oh, don't do this, don't do that. Well, I decided to show you the differences and basically the entire process of how to uh, open up your laptop, so to speak. You would want to look up a video specifically for your laptop. I'll give you a general idea of what is in store for you. Uh, different design styles for little laptops to determine uh, what sort of uh, tools you'll need and so on. Uh, I have already set out here some and I will be showing you everything that I have set out and the basic tools that you will need. I will show you taking apart two separate laptops. One is a Lenovo G780, which is a low-end gaming laptop, which means it has a dedicated video card. A lot of manufacturers, as long as it has a dedicated video card and it's not specifically designed for uh, businesses, they will list it as a gaming laptop. Now, they're decent for gaming, but not the best. I will also be showing you an older model, uh, Dell 1551, or no, 1508. 1558. Weird today. I don't know. 1558, which is a Dell Studio 15R. At least it was when I bought it. It isn't that anymore. Uh, so I will be showing you those two laptops, how to disassemble them, at least in general, in order to clean them and apply fresh thermal paste. Uh, or thermal compound, as they're now calling it. Personally, like this stuff, that's the Prolimatech PK3, just the best stuff I've come across, and it's very inexpensive for how much you get. And it's very high-end stuff. I, I brought five degrees over Arctic Silver 5, uh, considering that's the benchmark, everybody loves that thing drops an extra five degrees and it doesn't dry out. You don't ever have to replace it after the first time you've done it. I will be replacing it this time simply because I'm going to show you how to do it. Not that it needs it on my laptop, so I just wanted to show you. So let me pan down the camera and show you what's going on. Okay, various tools. Now, you can go on somewhere like Newegg and get a kit kind of like this. This kit is worth $10. So, it's really rather inexpensive to get a full kit of tools. And these tools right here 
also came in this minus the thermal paste. This is not part of it. This is not part of it. It's just those tools came from these slots. Put all of this in there. These things are ancient history. You won't use them. This is ancient history. You won't use that either. However, pretty much everything else you might use, unless you're not doing soldering, then soldering stuff will not be used. This is a replacement soldering iron, just to let you know, uh, because I liked the slightly warmer temperature of this one. But unless something goes wrong, should not need any other tools other than what I have laying down there. These are just excess. Now, the tools that you need are one medium small screwdriver, mainly because there are some really small screws, a larger one for larger screws because the smaller one will not pull them out correct. You can strip out the screw. And I recommend getting one of these so that you can pick stuff up. When you drop a screw down in between a couple of chips, you don't want to go shaking it around and risk damaging something. You'll just reach in and pick it up. So this is very useful tool that you'll need and I'll tell you which laptop is the one that needs it one of these either with the either sharp point or sharp edge mainly to pry something up because certain laptops require that it's just their way of making people not be able to disassemble their systems on their own as easily as possible. Certain manufacturers shy away from that method. Others don't. You need your thermal paste, of course. You will need high percentage rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Either one will work. What you need it for is to clean because that's what gets the grease off because essentially what thermal compounds are are oil and very 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 fine flakes of metal that's essentially what composes these thermal pastes thermal greases thermal compounds whatnot now uh, the very specifics of it at least as far as the pk series, the Prolimatech series of paste, are actually located on the back. This one actually says that it is 70 to 88 percent aluminum powder, 18 to 34 percent zinc oxide, and 8 to 12 percent oil, and 5 to 2 percent of an antioxidant. It doesn't specify which antioxidant, doesn't specify which type of oil. However, the metals are very specific and that is exactly what they are. They are straight up aluminum and zinc oxide. So very simple ingredients in it. You can call it a grease, you can call it a thermal compound, or you can call it a thermal paste. Either way, if you want to do it, you can go right ahead. Everybody should be able to tell the difference Pretty clear. I recommend, since you're probably doing it for the first time, a sheet of paper with nothing on it. That way, you can take, say, the back of your laptop, and wherever your screws are coming out of, and this one's missing a screw here, uh, wherever your screws are coming out of, you place them exactly the same spot paper. You don't move it. You set the paper off to the side where it's nice and out of the way. That way when you take everything apart and you go to put it back together, you know exactly which hole they came from because they might be different sizes. They might be the same size. You never know. And 
need a laser, even though I have one. I just like to use it because I can point at stuff without actually having to touch it, and you can be very specific with it. Next thing you'll definitely need is a bunch of paper towels. These are for wiping off the grease and helping with cleaning. All right. So now that I've shown you what you'll need, let's get down to what you need to do in order to clean off chips and make them a whole lot better. Everything. Yeah, I'm not talking well today. Let's start with the down. First off, you will have to bear in mind that in order to clean this properly, you will need to flip it over at least four times in the process. You'll need to disassemble back, and you'll have to pull off the keyboard in order to get down to the motherboard in order to take off the heat sink. And that's necessary in order to double paste under the heat sink. First thing you always do, remove the battery. You don't want that in there while you're doing this because of many reasons. One of the biggest one is you can short circuit it. Short circuiting a lithium ion battery is very bad. Short circuiting your motherboard with a lithium ion battery attached to it is worse because then you fry your motherboard too. And then you need to buy a new laptop. Motherboards are not that inexpensive that you can just swap them out in a laptop. Uh, certain laptops that is, most laptops, it, let's just say it's very rare to find a laptop that you can do that. So, first remove your battery, then take off whatever panels might be visible on the back besides the actual back itself since there will be panels so you'll have screws on the back but you'll also have panels on the back now this one only has one panel it has three screws on it that allow you to take off the panel this particular laptop, the panel only gives you access to the RAM and to your hard drive, as well as your wireless card and one chipset and your backup battery, which I don't know why they ever put those visible anymore, since one of these batteries will last you probably 20 years maximum draw on that battery. If you ever need to replace them, uh, you're probably wanting to replace your laptop too. So there's really no reason to have that open or easy to get to. It's not that important. Now, with these, you need to take out the screws or the hard drive. Because the hard drive screws also hold the back plate onto the main frame of the laptop, which is underneath the black the back plate. So essentially you have to disassemble quite a bit just in order to get the back plate off, which you need to do in order to get to the heat sink, which is right here. Nice and easy, don't go yanking it or bending it up. It slides out. This is standard. Slides out, pull it up, set it off to the side. If you want, you can take the screws, place them into the screw holes on the carrier. Now, some of them will have different carriers, but most of them have just a normal point system. Some have a two-point system and they're held in either by this connector or by another slot here. Either way, it doesn't really affect much. 
this is pretty standard, is they run the wires over the back, the back plate for the wireless antenna. So you have to attach the antenna wires. Try to make sure that you keep them directed the right way so that you don't put the wrong one on the wrong side. Now with Dell, they include a third wire, one of the rare three wire antenna systems that certain cards had. You won't find those kinds of adapt those kinds of wireless adapters very common anymore. Because they find that the two wire one is very easy to use, very common. So keep them facing the right way just in case that you don't accidentally connect them wrong. There should be a label on the wireless card showing you a white and a black arrow. Sometimes there will also be a gray one if you have the three wire system. Only connect the white wire to the white, black wire to the black, otherwise you won't get any good signal from it. You'll get a signal but it will be poor signal and you'll have issues with your Wi-Fi. Now, as far as I can tell, that's that for that part of it. Alright, now, you'll also need to remove your RAM. you got to be very careful with that. You don't want to short circuit it. You don't want to have any issues. So only touch it from the sides. Don't run your fingers along the brass there. And keep them nice and clean. I do that regardless of whether there's a screw under there or not, but there can usually be a screw under there. Now, to start with, I know I have to take off this back plate. I took this screw out previously using a bigger screwdriver than I should have. And I'm not using the paper because I know where all these screws go. But just organize out here. There's that one. Check around, make sure that there's others. There are this one. Now, it's still down in there. This one can't reach. So that's where the spike comes in handy. Down in, slip it under it. Sometimes I pull it up, but I can't. So I'm going to use the easy way. Flip it over, dump it out. Yes, I'm doing that. All right. As you can see, another one right up here. Reach for the bigger screwdriver because it's still kind of weird. Okay, that's it for the ones that are under things. Oh, no. another one here. Keep finding them. Keep finding them. The there are the more. There are. It is possible that some of these that I'm getting do not actually affect anything. That I'm trying to do. But there's always the possibility that they do. So it's better to remove those than have to remove them later. And you open it up. This is the tricky part. You have to peel off this plate. Damaging it. And I've peeled it off before, so it's a lot easier on mine. There's screws. Let me 
here, and right here. This entire bottom edge just held in by a little notch there, a little notch there, a little notch there, a little notch there. So, take out those screws. It up. I almost forgot. Notch right here on this side. Notch up here. Hold it in as well. Flip it over gently. Make sure you don't yank on this. This is very important. Because that is what connects your keyboard to motherboard. It's just a little flip. Flip it open. Out. Go over to the side. All right. Now on here, there's one, two, three screws. Another one here that I've really, really, really messed up. Another one here. Here, I don't know how many of those are for the motherboard and how many of them aren't. I'm just going to start taking them all off. I might have missed some on the back, I don't recall. But I do know that at the very minimum, one, that one, that one, oh, and they had the bad sense to. Run the fan or is that just the speaker wires over this and with the video stuff which all needs to be unplugged just in order to get at stuff. So that one. This one and this one are just for the speakers. All right. That's enough. Ah, yes. I do have to take that one off. This one's a pain. I really had to mess with it. It was glued in like crazy. No idea how badly glued in it was. All right, the screws. There's those. Now, I'm not sure if there's more of those that need to come out or not, but I know that I have to take this bottom plate off. That those were absolutely part of that. Now, I am missing, as I said, a screw from there. I think I have all the rest. Uh, come to think of it, I don't think I have to take all those wires off for the 
front. However, I wanted to just to be certain be safe. These screws, I happen to know that it doesn't matter which hole they go back in. Those are all the same. Make sure I got all of them out. You know, I didn't get that one out. I got all the rest. Okay. Open it back up. And see that I had forgotten these ones are here oh, yes Forgotten that one as well. Yes, this is a complex process just to get that back. Something hit my leg. Now it's that one. But I don't care about them. This is my Linux box, of course. So I don't really care. Anyway, let's see if we've got it. No, there's still something holding on. There. Don't want to force it if at all possible. Antennas. And as you can see, long, arduous process for this particular laptop. Okay, there's that. Now, I forgot to mention, I have to take that one off as well. Because this one, for the mouse, touch pad. All right, now we get down to the motherboard, which you then have to take out anyways. Have to take off all of those on the back, all of those on the back. Get down to this. This includes the CD ROM, DVD ROM, whatever you want to call it. Usually, it's held in by one screw, and whatever you got it plugged into, which is usually a serial ATA port. So theoretically, you could take this out and shove in a new hard drive if you wanted, which would be a good idea if you don't have a use for a disk drive in your laptop, which most people don't. So that would be my recommendation if you're like that. Now, get all these things plugged in have to unplug those because otherwise you're going to damage 
connectors for the motherboard. This one got the drive in the way. I forgot about that part. The drive does get in the way in this. So pull that out. Put it over here. And this is for the USB port. That's all it's for gets in the way. There's another one over here. That's for the power. Plug goes in over here. It has to come out as well. Now this one is for USB and the other or non-USB uh, extras an extra board to make it where you have to unplug that as well in order to get it apart. Now, this one, USB cable, they set it up in as inconvenient a way as possible, requiring you to actually start pulling out the board. When it comes to this board, you want to be absolutely certain that you put them back in the exact same holes as possible. It's well, not as possible, but it is. Uh, in the exact same holes as you took them out. If you don't, you could have a screw in a hole that is for one that comes through from the back, or it holds on a faceplate, or something like that. Also have issues with short circuiting problems, uh, grounding problems, stuff like that. Notice I had to unplug another speaker. Okay. Let's see if that took it out. I don't know. This side can lift so that that can unplug. Should be everything from that side. Oh yeah. This one has a screw into the heat sink, holding the heat sink to the back plate rather than just to the motherboard. Having those. Dell makes their, well, at the very least, used to make their stuff as difficult to disassemble as possible. All right, that does disassemble it. So, I had to take off all the stuff on the back. Take off the front and all the stuff on the front to take off the CD ROM in order to unplug a USB port, and then you had to lift off the motherboard in order to unplug the extra stuff or in order to actually remove the board in order to get access to the heatsink. 